Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up a project with BAML. Let's start from the very beginning. created a Python project and let's go ahead and open this inside a cursor. Let's go ahead and set this up. So the first thing we'll do is install BAML. Awesome. If you haven't already, make sure you find the VS Code extension for BAML and install that. Once you've set that up you and installed BAML, you can run BAML CLI in it. This will give you a bunch of BAML code that you can see. In this BAML code, you'll have some BAML files. You'll have three files, a client.baml, generator.baml, and then a resume.baml. For now, let's just look at resume.baml so we can understand what it's doing. A function in BAML is comprised of just three parts. The name of the function, the parameters of the function, and then the return type. It looks like TypeScript. The body of a function, unlike code, is represented by first class a model itself. You indicate what client you'll be using. So in this case, I'm calling the OpenAI provider with GPT-40 as the model. And then I'm using the prompt described over here. The return type and to see what this prompt looks like. I hit this open playground button. And now I'll be able to see my entire prompt fully rendered as I type, it will update. If I change this to open GPT-40 mini, it will change up here as well to match what I expect. I'll know what model I'm using at any given time. The prompt will show you the tokens if available for the right tokenizer. And additionally, the prompt will show you the raw web request being made. But here you can see the API key I'm using, along with all the parameters to the model as well. That includes chat message, the actual text uh, in the system, and if I wanted to make something for say, <laughs> including the entire web request. So in this case, you can see that everything here is going in as a system message. Now, what parts are everything here? You can actually see that this is going to change as I remove things. Now, this JSON is really hard to read. So let's just look at the actual prompt and see what every part is doing. So CTX set output format is actually injecting the data model into my prompt. As I change this data model, um, my prompt changes as well to match it, and I don't have to think about it. But one last thing about BAML is the fact that it's able to run tests right in the UI itself, along with in your flow. So here you can see my test case is defined here. Tests are a first class citizen. So if I hit run test, you'll be able to see that the model outputted something and in this case, it included some backticks with the JSON and match my schema. And what BAML does for you it's, is that it's able to take the raw response from the LLM and convert it into your actual data type right over here. So this is the resume data model as parsed from this response. That means without the backticks automatically. Now I want you to pay attention to the fact that this was 72 output tokens. Let's try something. Remember, 72 output tokens to produce this today. Now you'll notice that we went down to 56 output tokens, got pretty much the same output. BAML was able to go ahead and convert your data model from this to this. This is because we no longer need quotes to actually parse any of the data. So because we don't use quotes, we're able to reduce it from 72 to 56. What that means is you just save you just cut down your cost by 23% without modifying anything else. Now you did spend a little bit more on the input side. In fact, we can see exactly how much more we spent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Maybe we can do better by making this. That looks like it'd be less token. So why don't we just go ahead and do this? Do not. Or we could just say no quotes around strings. Boom. And we can quickly test and see if this will actually produce the same result. It seems like it does. It actually got us a few more tokens because it did use quotes around some of it. But overall, we're still going to be a little bit cheaper and faster because of this. Now, what you might find is I may not want experience to actually be a string. Maybe I want it to be something a little bit better. So let's make a new class. Title company, and let's go run this. And all of a sudden, it will still work. We're able to actually get title and company coming out of the model as we go ahead and look at this. Because instead of prompt engineering, where I'm going to go ahead and write the prompt and in, write instruction to prompt, I do all my work in the data model. Now you can do this with all sorts of things. For example, I might want uh, And you're actually watching cursor go ahead and auto complete this for me. And once again, we're able to figure out exactly what these are. Now I can have a standardized mechanism with a more liberal title that the user gives for every single role. It could be software, engineer, clearly I've not been imagined any of my past roles listed on this example resume over here. Now, eventually I will want to move away from just prompting in BAML and use this in real code, either my Python code, TypeScript code, Java code, some other code that you might have. In BAML, every single function that you create will actually be able to be used in any language of your choice. So in this case, I have a Python project. Let's see what it feels like to call the extract resume function in Python. Let's set this up to use the right Python environment. And we'll also turn on type checking mode because it's going to make it more fun to use. Cool. So how do we use this extract resume function that we wrote in BAML? Let's take a look. All you do is from BAML client import B and you do resume equals B dot extract resume. You're watching autocomplete in real time. Resume dot experience is going to be a list of experiences. Let's take a look again so we know what this is. Experience is a list of experiences. That makes sense. What if we made it a list of strings? Experience is now going to be a list of strings. Your BAML types and your Python types will be perfectly in sync at all points. That's because under the hood, we actually create Pydantic models that mimic the BAML types for you that you can stay, keep in sync. Now, what if you're streaming? Let's see what that looks like. Let's take a look at email. Email will always be optional or none because while streaming, you may not yet have the email object available to you. Let's take a look at what happens when you get the final response. The final response will have email be a string. Now you may find that you may also want to use something in async. That becomes easy as well. You can just import the async client instead. And now all of a sudden, these become awaitable. Now you just put in a wait in front of B and this will become a resume object. For the stream, this needs to be an async for Async. And now all of these become correctly typed again. So not only can you do this in synchronous mode, you can do it in async mode. Eventually, you may want to use a slightly more sophisticated model than just OpenAI. For example, you may want a model that tries GPT-40, then eventually tries GPT-40 Mini. Let's go ahead and use this OpenAI fallback client and see what this does for us. Let's go ahead and see what this does for us. 
Do I have to see that I'm calling the custom Chief T4O model, then eventually calling the custom Chief T4O mini model? What if I wanted to retry logic around Chief T4O a few times, or I wanted to configure temperature? I could set temperature to 1 over here. And you'll notice, in the web request, the temperature is 1. But for this model, it has no temperature attached to it. And you're able to see the web request change automatically as we take a look at this. Now, with a retry policy, we can do something similar. Let's add a custom retry policy. You're watching the visualization change immediately in real time. And you're actually able to see that this retry policy is being applied. If I were to go ahead and change this to have just one additional retry, my visualization will also change to reflect that. The whole point of BAML as a language is we can build these tools as a first class citizen into the language. When you use these same tools in your Python code, this code doesn't even know that you have a retry policy attached to it because it's beautifully type safe everywhere you use it. If you were to go ahead and instead use TypeScript, Ruby, Java, Python, Go, or C++ through our open API representation, you will get the same level of type safety and guarantee that I just showed you with Python. If I change this code, for example, and this is the magic folder, BAML client, I change this code to TypeScript, everything in BAML client is suddenly going to be TypeScript. Change it back to Py if I change to Ruby Survey, everything in BAML client is going to be Ruby. If I change it back to Python, it's all going to be Python. This is perfectly in sync with your code base and you'll never lose touch. All of the BAML code lives locally, never makes any additional remote calls. And any of the error correction that I showed you today is always happening locally on your own machine without any additional usage, uh, without any additional LLMs. And it happens in under one to two milliseconds. Because BAML is its own language with its own runtime implementation, all of this is implemented fully in Rust. Any version of BAML that you use in Python, in TypeScript, in Ruby, or any other place, as long as you're on the same version of BAML, will have the same exact performance points. I hope this was useful and I hope this was fun. Thank you.